Hey everyone, this video is going to cover how to create a tournament on BracketWrestling.com. As you can see, I'm already logged in and I'm underneath my account. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create a Tournament. This is going to take me to a wizard to go through each step the system needs to know uh, for setting up the tournament. So tournament name, the date that you will be having the tournament. You can decide when you want the brackets to be released. Either you can leave it empty to have them released right away, or you can specify a specific date and time and when you want the brackets to be re released. Choose how you want your brackets numbers to be assigned. Every match starts at one, sequentially, where it'll start at one and go all the way on up. They will never reset. Um, also have an option to put the bracket numbers uh, by the division name, the weight, and the sequence. Um, typically, people choose every match starts at one. Group wrestlers by grade, birth year, age, or weight class. I'm going to choose grade. And how many mats that we have. I can decide whether I want the tournament listed underneath the tournament search page or not. And then give the address of where your tournament will be held. And then I can also specify any additional information like the weigh-in time, awards, concessions, all that good stuff. And I click on Next, and this will create my tournament. Okay, so next I'm taken to the pre-registration page. Here I can configure what I want for pre-registration. I can choose None to do no pre-registration online and on site where I'll collect pre-registration money online or and I'll collect it at the door. Or I can choose online only where walk-ins are not allowed or team. So for this demo I'm going to choose online and on site. If I was to choose team I can uh, just to show that I can select which team or I mean which state um, I can also enter in which team and give them a password and then I can send out the passwords to each team so then they, when they log into the system they'll be able to enter their all of the wrestlers for their team. Uh, so I've also given a quick link so you can advertise this link with your tournament so say pre-registration here. Specify when you want your pre-registration to start as well as when you want the pre-registration to end. Give the pre-registration limit and a price. And then you can also specify your on-site price. You can choose whether to require an approximate weight or not. So if you're not going to weigh in the wrestlers when they come to your tournament, you are going to want to require them to have their approximate weight. If you're going to weigh everyone at the tournament anyways, this might not necessarily be needed. Uh, sometimes for JV tournaments, everyone weighs in when they get there anyways, so when they pre-register um, as a team anyways, we don't collect their weights. But totally up to you. So if we're going to be collecting money for your tournament, we need to know who to make the check out to. So we'll collect the money as Bracket Wrestling when people pre-register. And then after your tournament, we'll send out a check for all the money that you've earned through pre-registration. So we need to know who to send that check to. And then go ahead and click Next. And that'll take us to the next step. So now I need to enter my divisions. So I'll click on add a division. I'm going to say pre-K to K. Four man round robin. Right now we support up to eight man round robin, placing up to four. You can set the minimum wrestlers for this bracket. So this will tell the system when it's generating the brackets, how many, what's the minimum amount of wrestlers that are required to make a four man bracket. And you can sign mat numbers, so I could 
say I want pre-K and kindergartners to only be on mats one and two, for example. But typically, um, most tournaments leave this open to overflow to the next mat. So what this will do, it'll start on a mat one, um, bracket one with the little kids, and it'll work its way on up throughout all the mats and distribute the brackets evenly across the mats. That way we have a uh, better distri distribution of how many brackets are on each mat so they typically get done um, around the same time anyways. A uh, very common scenario is the big kids, they have junior high kids at your tournament and you want them to be on a full mat and say mats 9 and 10 are full mats, you want specifically choose 9 and 10 and I'll do that when I get to that grade. So choose the range, so this is pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. I'm going to bracket by skill level, you can also bracket by record. And weight classes. You can define weight classes for your tournament, um, otherwise you can say none. And that will just group the wrestlers together by closest weight. And here's our division. If I wanted to edit that division, I can just click on the name again. And it'll give me all the information to change. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to enter in the rest of the divisions. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have all the divisions entered. Oh, and so for the 7th and 8th graders, I'm going to specifically choose mats 9 and 10 for them. So all of my divisions are bracketing by skill level. You can change it per division if you'd like. Um, all the mats are going to, as far as bracket numbers, are going to overflow. These divisions are going to overflow to the next mat for a better distribution of brackets other than the 7th and 8th graders. And they're all going to be four-man brackets. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the next step. And here we can define the weight differences. Okay, so here we have the weight differences that we can define. So when the system generates the brackets, it'll look at these weight differences and try to group the wrestlers within these ranges. So if you weigh 50 pounds, you'll have a maximum of a 10% weight difference within your bracket. If you weigh in between here, say you weigh 60 pounds, you'll have a maximum of a 9% weight difference within your respective bracket. So all of these are editable, um, so feel free to either leave them as is, that's what probably 90 plus percent of the tournaments do, otherwise you can change those as you like, but keep in mind the lower that you uh, make those ranges, the harder it is for the system to fit wrestlers into brackets, so you'll probably have more manual bracketing to do the lower you make these percentages. And you might even consider moving them up. Now the system will try to group the wrestlers closest weight, uh, and then it will try to move them into different brackets based off the skill levels from there. So I'm just going to leave these as they are. I'll move on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is the security. So you don't want to do all the work yourself. A lot of times you want helpers to help you do the bracketing and enter the wrestlers. Uh, so here we give you the option to search for someone else in the system that already has an account at in Bracket Wrestling. And then you could check their name and you can grant them access to this tournament. So typically, if you are entering everybody into the tournament the morning of and going to be doing all the bracketing in the morning, I suggest having one person per division. So in our, in our tournament here, we have five different divisions. All right, so I'm going to assign somebody to take care of the pre-K and kindergartners, first and second graders, and so on. So I have five different divisions. I want five different helpers. Now everybody, you don't have to separate the kids when they, when you get the bracket sheets from the from the weigh-in room. Everyone can enter those as they are. But when you actually get the bracketing, so you don't kind of cross wrestlers, 
you don't try to bracket the same wrestlers, two different people. You try to separate it out and uh, separate out how much work you got to do when you have to do manually bracketing after generating. So more of a safeguard is to assign one person per division. If you need to invite someone new, click on invite a new user, put in their email address, and we'll send them an email. Otherwise, for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to leave myself, and I'll go to next. So the next step is entering the contact information for your tournament. So this is typically your tournament directory, uh, director, sometimes your club president, or just somebody helping out with the tournament, sometimes a coach. So I click on add a contact, so I'll put in my name. You can put in your phone number or your email. And title. You can enter in the phone number. As well. Um, one of these is required. You either have to give an email or a phone number or both. Then you click save. I can enter in as many contacts as I would like, but at least one is required. And then that will show up on the tournaments page when the fans are looking at your tournament so they know who to contact for your tournament. I would also like to mention that your contact information is only available to the public while um, prior to your tournament being held. So after your tournament is done, we don't show your contact information on our website anymore. If I go to next. In this next step is the payment information. So you have to select which payment type you would like. You have two options, either email and invoice. I'll tell you how much the invoice is and enter your electronic signature. Also note there's a 5% late fee. Your invoice is typically due 30 days after your tournament is held. Or you can also pay right away with credit card. or have the email invoice to you if you want the club to be paying for it. Or you could send a check however you would like. Now lastly, you're taken to the summary page where it summarizes all the information that you previously entered. So general information, the pre-registration, divisions and weight differences, as well as security. So go ahead and review all the information and don't forget to click the finish button on the bottom here. That will flag your tournament as being the setup is finished and it will display on the tournament search page. Um, if any of this information is incorrect, uh, you could go back to any one of these steps at any point during your tournament. Uh, there's only a few restrictions once you have wrestlers and brackets created for your tournament. Otherwise, the majority of these steps can be configured at any time. So I'll go ahead and click Finish. And then I'll be taken to the tournament homepage. On the tournament homepage here, we have the fan link. So when you advertise your tournament, you can provide this link. It'll take your fans directly to your tournament on our website. Here's a pre-registration link again, if you're offering pre-registration. You can also create a QR code that you can include in promotional materials and you can also print weigh-in slips. 